Hello, everyone. Welcome to Online Seller UK podcast. My name is Prabhat, founder at Online Seller UK. And today we've got another interesting topic that's dealing with inventory challenges on Amazon and beyond. So I'm joined by Fabricio, who is the founder and CEO of a company called Flavor. So um, before we dive into the topic, Fabricio, welcome to our podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Prabhat. Excellent. So if you introduce yourself a bit better than what I did, and then we can take into the topic. Yeah, yeah. My name is Fabrice Miranda. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Fleber. Um, we are an inventory uh, planning platform, a uh, multi-channel inventory planning platform, and we connect to Amazon and a bunch of other channels. Excellent. So, um, so inventory is one of the well, obviously pillars of success on uh, selling on Amazon and beyond, and especially it becomes crucial during holiday time and during seasonal, you know, busy period where. Uh, where things can go wrong. Sorry, I, I didn't want to start with negative, but you know that does happen, unfortunately. So I think, you know, let, let, let's start with what Fleaver does and then we take it from there. Yeah, so uh, Fleaver was was developed based on my own experience. So I Fleaver is my seventh venture. I've had a lot of other ventures, uh, four of them in the same segment. And one of them was uh, an Amazon brand. I was selling products on Amazon. We had $12 million of sales back in 2016. Um, we sold it in 2019. But when I started that venture, all I wanted was to have the glamour of building a product and doing marketing and sales. And reality was that 80% of my time was dealing with things related to inventory. And every time we either made or lost money on a product, it was based on how well we did the inventory game prior to that sale. So I understood, and also studying more about it, that real successful brands make money in operations, not in sales. And I decided that I was going to solve all the challenges, huge challenges in inventory, uh, especially if you're multi-channel. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about, you know, given your background of, um, you know, on Amazon and maybe other platforms as well. So what are the, some of the regular challenges that are faced by by the seller in terms of inventory? Yeah, if you're if you're selling less than a million dollars, um, there's a lot for you to do to still build a business. So you can still deal with uh, spreadsheets and the losses that you have related to inventory. They are not. I mean, they might be huge, but you're still building a business. So there's other focuses that you have to put uh, other than inventory. But once you get to a million dollars and above. What happens is you start having a lot of complexity. You start having more SKUs, more suppliers. Uh, you have seasonal products. You have some products that are not seasonal. You start having stockouts of some products, and that stockout will harm the way you're forecasting uh, your sales. So if you're using moving average, for example, which is what everybody uses on Excel spreadsheet, and you had a stockout in the last 30 days, uh, that's going to bring down the average. And you have to remember that you had a stockout and manually adjust the formula and that becomes very prone to errors. And you know, without talking about the whole hassle of downloading reports, pasting into spreadsheets, and, and potentially making a mistake in the copy and paste, and having a wrong result due to a wrong calculation in the wrong cell. So all of those things start harming the business. And if you get to 5 million plus, that starts being something that can make you go out of business. Stockouts and overstocks. They are responsible for $1.8 trillion in losses in global retail, which is crazy. So it makes a lot of companies go out of business. So as I say, successful brands understand early that success comes from having efficient operations much more than having clever marketing. Okay. So how does Flavor play in, play a role in this? Yeah. So... Um, there's a, a few different aspects. The most important and most underrated one is visibility. Um, you know, I usually use the, the example of a baby monitor. If you have a baby, you nowadays, you, you cannot live without a baby monitor. At the time of my parents, there was no baby monitor. Uh, the baby would cry. They would have to listen to hear the baby crying or bring the baby into the room. And the baby monitor, what it brought was peace of mind, was basically... Now you know that anytime you want, you just look at that monitor, you see how your baby is. You don't need to stop what you're doing, go there and check and et cetera. And I think an inventory system starts with the same. It's, it's visibility and peace of mind. It's understanding very clearly what is your inventory position today. Um, 
how are your sales behaving? If you have products going more uh, uh, um, up more than they than you expected or, or down more than you expected, uh, what is your future inventory position? When do you need to replenish? All of those things is outsourced to a system. So you have peace of mind. You don't have to be crazy downloading things and trying to find out that information and crossing information from different sources. The system does that. Uh, second thing that the system does is in terms of accuracy. Um, nowadays, what happens is that most of the times people use an Excel spreadsheet. Excel works with cells. So you have to use a cell to make a calculation inside of that cell. Uh, a system like ours works with streams of data. So for example, if you have a seasonal product that changes your sales pattern around the, like, any time of the year, if you're using moving averages, depending on the time of the year that you're using, you have a certain amount of products being sold. Um, and in our system, that is done automatically. You're, you are forecasting for six months from today. We're going to understand that six months from today, you're going to have a ramp up because of Christmas. But if you're using a 30-day moving average, you're not going to see that because in the last 30 days, you didn't have a ramp up of products. So this is the type of things. And a, a lot of other ones, I was just talking to a customer. Uh, we have a stock out substitution in our forecasting. So if you had a stock out uh, in the period that you're forecasting for, we are substituting that for what would have been the sales so that you're not forecasting a new stock out. So all of those things improve deeply improve the accuracy uh, of your, um, of your uh, forecasts. And the third one is, is, is easy operations. You, you save a lot of time. Customers report on average a 92% decrease in the time they need to place a replenishment. So we have quotes in the website saying, oh, we got from hours to minutes. Uh, and that's a huge benefit also. You can focus and dedicate your time to other things other than you know, copy and pasting formulas into Excel spreadsheets. Okay, so um, so what I'm hearing is the intelligent system that sort of uh, tells you when to react in the right time, so that you you are avoiding that stock out situation. So that's very clever. So um, I have seen and heard of a system, obviously multi channel inventory, which is a very popular word in the in the industry in the e commerce where people sell on Amazon and Shopify and yep. eBay and all that sort of thing. So, um. It's not a trick question, but how do you differentiate Fleba between yourself and multi-channel? Multi-channel inventory systems, you mean? That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, So we are a multi-channel inventory platform, meaning that mm -hmm. we are connecting to different sources of data. Uh, mm -hmm. There are very few other systems that do the same. Uh, most systems in the market are single-channel, like Amazon systems. Yes. And yeah. even when they are multi-channel, they have one singularity, which is... Uh, to operate them, you have to select what accounts you want to see. So you want to see the Amazon North America account, and you only see that. Then to see the Europe, you have to go from out of Amazon North America and go to Amazon Europe. The problem is that inventory is multi-channel by nature. You don't operate per selling account. So those systems, they miss on, on giving you a full picture of what's happening. At Fleeber, we're one of the only systems in the market uh, that actually gets the data from all these different sources and consolidates them into a single view. So now you can navigate however way you want. You can filter things by sales channel or you can filter things by inventory location, whatever you want to filter. But if you want to see everything combined, you can see everything combined. And a huge benefit that a lot of our customers uh, uh, give feedback uh, uh, to us about is that Fleeber is the first place where they can start comparing products that are in completely different channels and different and have different uh, um, ways of behaving. So you can start seeing, oh, this product here on Shopify, in the next 365 days, it's forecasted to sell in a certain level that they didn't have visibility. And that's going to be better than on Amazon Europe, for example, that today it's selling more, but for the next 365 days, Amazon Europe is going down. So all these compares, comparisons across channels are really important. And then the last thing that I think is, is critical is that when you're replenishing, you're replenishing based on the inventory location. So a very normal use case that we see is you have a 3PL in the US, for example, and you have products on the 3PL. When you need products on Amazon, that 3PL transfers units to Amazon FBA. Oh, and the nice. same 3PL is 
uh, fulfilling the units that you sell on Shopify. So it acts as a fulfillment for Shopify and it acts as a storage to transfer to the fulfillment on Amazon. And that adds a huge complexity because you, when you're defining how many units you need to purchase from your supplier at the 3PL level, you need to take into consideration the daily sales from Shopify and the shipments that you need to send to Amazon, you know, as Amazon needs it. Um, our, our system does it all automatic. So that that is a huge uh, change to whatever you have on an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, hundred percent. I can I can see what you're saying. I think it's 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 a huge burden for for any seller, especially busy one, to manage yep. all this. So that's all good. So I think um, that's let's go towards the end. So we are towards the end of the podcast. So thanks very much for sharing what Fleaver can do. Um, if somebody wants to just you know book a call or come and talk to you to discuss their situation, where is the best place to find you? Yeah, so I, I always promote all my personal uh, channels of communication. So my email is fm, f as in Fabricio, m as in Miranda, my first and last name, fm at fleber.com. Fleber is written F-L-I-E-B-E-R.com. Um, I have my LinkedIn. It's also Fabricio Miranda, my, my uh, LinkedIn URL. Um, and if you go to Fleber's website, you can uh, book either book a demo or start a free trial. Automatically, you don't have to talk to anyone. You start a free trial, connect your accounts, 30, day, uh, 30 days for free. So all of these ways are good ways for you to start learning more about Fleaver. Excellent. So thank you, uh, Fabrizio, for your time today. And I'll speak to you soon. All the best. Thank you very much.